and good morning. This is the part 1 ng presentation nitong portable weather system and then which you can install anywhere to gather data as well as monitor uh, disaster, environmental disaster which is a very good device or system uh, to help us uh, prevent uh, disas disasters like flood, uh, typhoon and something like sort of uh, something like that as well as uh, the system is designed to have data logging sa SD card as well as uh, internet of things data logging din pero isisend niya papuntang internet so this is a mobile and portable device kasi uh, you, what you use to send data sa internet is not wifi or, or uh, ethernet cable what you use is a GPRS uh, GSM GPRS or uh, in our case it's like mobile data so kailangan lang natin ng sim card na mayroong data then we are able to send data sa internet for us to monitor wirelessly so kahit saan ka sa globe uh, or saan ka sa mundo uh, pwede mong makita yung readings ng mga sensors na ito or mga measuring instruments na ito uh, via internet so pwede mong makita kung anong level na ng tubig sa river kung gaano nakalakas yung hangin, gaano kalakas yung ulan and this is very good for researches kasi as uh, we've known meron tayong mga big data processing equipments or big data, big data processing studies in which kapag meron tayong data for the past few months or past few years pwede nating gawan ng mapping in such way that uh, engineering and science can create a map na mapipredict natin yung future uh, readings by having yung past readings for years so parang ganun yung nangyayari in such way in, in some countries that they they can predict kung kailan yung malalakas na ulan or kailan yung malalakas based on previous data collected so to explain uh, the whole system is like this no although wala pa siyang casing pero madilang naman siyang i-case so ito yung main controller natin it's an Arduino Mega tapos meron siyang sensor shield sensor shield so it's actually intact hindi na siya natatanggal-tanggal kasi dinikit na uh, i mean nakadikit na siya so ito yung kanyang power supply it's a 12 volts 2 ampere uh, DC adapter so uh, actually itong kanyang power supply is single power supply lang ng 12 volts it is designed so that kung sakaling gusto mo siyang gawing solar powered it's actually very simple ang gagawin lang natin is to cut this wire tapos yung wire na to yun ang ilalagay sa 12 volts output ng solar powered system so meron tayong system na nilalagyan nila ng solar power charge controller so meron yun siyang 12 volts output so dito mo lang ikabit Okay. So that way, pwede mo nang i-power yung buong system ng solar so that you can install it sa mga bundok kung saan walang kuryente. But for this prototype, I will use this 12 volts to ampere for the testing later. Okay. So i-explain ko muna yung parts. Okay. So what we use na controller is Arduino Mega 2560R3. By the way, meron siyang mga labels. So nilabel natin kung saan mga pins connected. So wala lang basta for the prototyping purposes only. Okay. So, ito yung GSM, this is SIM-800A, uh, GSM GPRS module. This is used to send data sa internet or sa internet website, web host, via mobile data. So, ang kailangan lang is SIM card na merong mobile data. Okay. So, for one month, uh, merong mga SIM cards like networks like TM, meron silang one month only data or like uh, mga 500 megabytes, something like that na data. So, you can use that. Actually, sobra-sobra na yun siya to send data since konti lang namang, konting kilobytes lang naman ang sinisend nito papuntang internet. Upload lang naman din siya. Hindi siya nag-download ng data. Okay. Next, we have, uh, explain natin yung mga sensors na ginamit, yung paano sila mag-work. First is, to measure the temperature and humidity, we have this HT, HT, HTU21D IC or integrated chip ng HTU21D. It can measure temperature up to second uh, accurate up to second decimal point. Uh, dalawang decimal points, let's say 27.29 degrees Celsius. In, it's in degrees Celsius form kasi yun ang main natin dito. But anyways, we can convert naman kung sakaling gusto natin gawing Fahrenheit or Kelvin. So, uh, it can be converted sa code. No? Pero ang, ang main ano niya is nasa uh, degree Celsius and it's quite accurate HTU21D if you can check sa internet ah, ang kanyang IC is accurate up to second 
decimal point. And <coughs> meron tayo, uh, this, this sensor also measures the humidity, relative humidity in percentage. So, malalaman natin kung mataas yung humidity or mainit or meron tayong mga humid places or medyo maraming tubig sa hangin. So, pwede natin makita yun doon. And, uh, ma-measure at saka ma-data log. And anyway, send sa internet. This is the BH1750. This is a light intensity sensor. Kung baga, kung gusto mong i-measure yung weather, kailangan ma-measure and ma-data log mo rin yung gaano kalakas, gaano ka-intense yung ilaw or yung liwanag doon sa part ng ng uh, place na yun or part ng uh, forest or any, anywhere city. Uh, this one measures luminosity or in lux. So, malalaman niya kung makulimlim or maliwanag yung lugar. Tapos, madidigita laging din yan. This one is the BMP280. Okay. Uh, BMP280 is basically a pressure, atmospheric pressure sensor. So, may measure niya sa iyo yung uh, uh, kung ilang pascal. Actually, pesca, pascal yung kanyang main, ano, main unit. But, you can convert to millibar or or bars, okay, kung sakaling gusto mo. But anyways, uh, it, it's, in, it's in Pascal. So, it's actually accurate. Uh, kung meron kang formula, actually meron tayong formula, no? makukuha mo yung uh, altitude uh, from sea level against sea level, gano'ng kataas yung lugar against sea level using the pressure. But for now, we just got, want to have weather data. So, pwede natin kunin yung atmospheric pressure. So, this is the DS3231RTC. So, gusto kasi natin mag-data logging sa SD card. So, kailangan natin ng correct time. So, para malaman yung correct time, kailangan meron tayong clock. So, ito yung ating clock. Uh, RTC stands for Real Time Clock. So, ang gusto kasi natin is, ma ma ano natin yung date time, tapos yung mga readings, ma-save dito sa, ito yung ating SD card. So, meron tayong clock para makuha natin yung correct date and time, tapos i-save yun siya sa SD card in Excel form. Ang tawag natin dito is CSV form or Excel form. So, kumbaga, lahat ng readings mo nalalagay sa Excel. So, Excel is quite good for data logging kasi kapag nasa Excel na, pag nabuksan mo siya sa Excel, Excel is na nasa Microsoft, uh, pwede mong makuha yung average, yung mean, uh, I mean yung, yung maximum, minimum by using Excel formats. And it's quite pleasing sa eye, te tabular form siya. Okay. So, another sensor, this, is, this sensor is quite... Uh, Designed, uh, nakuha ko yung design sa internet. This is a 3D printed uh, sensor. This is actually a measuring device ng rain intensity. So, kung gaano kalakas yung ulan per square, uh, actually square meter, no? Per square meter. So, yung area na yan, gaano kalakas yung ulan sa area na yun. So, how does this um, sensor works, no? Kung gaano siya ka-accurate. So, this is calibrated already for a uh, liter per square meter. So, ang ginawa natin is, measure natin yung area nito, kasi circle naman to siya. Uh, ang area niya is nasa uh, from 100 centimeter. Uh, sorry, sorry. That's actually 10 centimeter. So, 10 centimeter yung kanyang radius. So, yung kanyang area is, multiply lang yun siya with pi, no? Pi D. And then, <coughs> So, makuha natin yung area nito. Since kung pag umuulan, papasok dito yung tubig kasi nakaslant yan siya. So, papasok dyan yung tubig and topping up itong ating uh, tipping bucket. So, ang nangyari dito is pag napuno yung bucket, meron yung siyang bucket dyan, dalawa. Okay. Magtitip siya over the other. So, parang abang na umuulan, gumaganyan-ganyan ito siya. Okay. So, ang ginagawa natin, kinakount natin yung number of tips. Okay. Tapos, multiplied by the volume nitong tipping bucket dito. So, meron nyan siyang parang container ng tubig, tipping bucket. Okay. So, that way, makukuha natin yung liter for per square meter gano'ng kalakas yung ulan. So, let's say, ilagay mo ito siya sa forest or any place. Tapos, umulan ng malakas sa ibang lugar o sa, sa buong lugar. So, may papasok dito na tubig. Tapos, magditip yung bucket doon. You count the number of tips multiplied by the volume of each part, each tip ng tipping bucket. <coughs> Uh, magkuha mo yung ilang liters yung dumaan tapos multiplied by this area so that is uh, in liters per meter squared so gaano malalaman natin kung gaano kalakas yung ulan rain intensity gaano karaming tubig yung nabuhos per square meter ng area next is is for the flood monitoring uh, ginagamit natin siya sa flood monitoring kahit sa mga industrial systems uh, meron din naman ako nakita dati na ginamit siya sa barko for uh, 
uh, boiler, no? parang gina ginagamit siyang float valve ng boiler, but usually sa mga barko, they do not use uh, electronics, but the concept is the same. So, install natin ito siya, ito yung tawag sa kanila is float switch. Uh, Ini-install natin siya sa reverse para ma-detect kung gaano nakataas yung uh, pagtaas ng tubig kasi uh, reverse are mainly the cause of flash flood. So, basically, ito sa pinakamababang part ng river, o parang, let's say for example, ito yung side ng river, dito dumadaan yung tubig, let's say for example, ilagay natin dito yung first sensor, second sensor, and then third sensor. So, pag umabot yung tubig sa first sensor, basically, ang, tick, ang trick ng float, set, float switch is, aangat to siya kapag nasubmerge sa tubig, kasi magaan lang naman to siya, and this is actually plastic, and styro. So, aakyat to siya, tapos madidetect yun ng system, big sabihin, naabot na yung ating, first level ng warning and then pag umakyat pa yung tubig let's say dalawa na sila okay so that's already second level ng warning or medyo mataas-taas na yung tubig pag umabot talaga sa critical part so dito yon abot na siya ng third part so that is the third level of warning so that's actually critical level or telling us na masyado nang mataas yung tubig sa river flash flood is incoming parang ganun ba so directly related kasi siya So, basically, kapag nag-install tayo, strategic, strategical positioning lang ng float switch. So, kung gusto natin, uh, kasi medyo mahaba yung isa, yung kasi yung pinaka first, first level, then yung pina, medyo ma, sa gitna na haba ng wire, second level, and then ito yung pinaka maikli is yung highest level ng warning. So, kung gusto natin dagdagan, kasi usually itong system, install mo to sa taas ng river, tapos ilalagay mo lang ito siya, yung tatlong wires na to, then ikaklamp siguro. In some cases, the, yung mga uh, installer ng mga system nito, uh, nilalagyan nila ng hose, tapos pinapasok lang nila ito dito. Tapos yung hose hanggang dito lang yan. Tapos ito, install nila, ididikit nila dyan. Some, parang ganito. Tapos, uh, in such way na pag umabot yung tubig, mamumove siya pataas. Okay. So kung gusto natin dagdagan yung wire, or in, i, habaan yung wire, madali lang naman, putulin lang ito siya. But actually, medyo mahaba naman to, pero baka sakaling kulang pa so putulin nito siya tapos dagdagan lang ng wire dito actually very simple okay. so, this is the float switch lastly we have the wind speed meter or isang uh, prototype device that I bought uh, actually ito this is gamit din ito ng mga uh, industrial form uh, this is this can measure kung gaano kalakas yung wind speed ang pinakamataas na pwede niyang i-measure is nasa 32 meters per second actually kapag Nasa 32 meters per second daw, usually yung mga atip ng mga bahay, yung mga systems natin, natanggal, nahihila na yan ng lakas ng hangin. So, rare lang nag-aabot ng ganong kalakas yung, uh, yung wind speed. So, I guess that's all. Ah, by the way, ito yung LCD. Hindi ko siya nalagay. So, LCD will, dis will display the readings dito. Ilalagay niya dito kung ano yung temperature, humidity, pressure, um, ano pa ba? Uh, <coughs> light intensity in locks. And then, yung, yung wind speed, yung rain intensity, kaya ilalagay nyo yung lahat dito ng weather readings natin. Uh, tapos, isi-save yun siya every interval. Uh, let's say, every, every minute, pwede natin i-save dito sa SD card. So, pag kinuha natin yung SD card, tapos tingnan natin yan sa computer, makita mo lahat ng readings na yun. We'll be testing that one the next video. Isi-send natin sa internet. Okay? And preferably, I'm making the design ng, ng website ngayon to graph the data para makita natin yung graphing value niya talaga. So, send sa internet via mobile data. Okay, and I guess that's all. Ang um, kailangan lang is just a, a parang uh, insight kung paano siya i-casing kasi we don't actually give a casing na baka masira lang sa shipping. So, we just place it on the Tupperware uh, na malaki and then isi-ship siya by LBC. So, sa casing, it's quite simple. etong mga to, sa labas lang to ng casing. Ito, yung, yung GSM and SD card, kahit, at saka RTC. Okay. Kahit nasa loob na sila ng casing. Okay, ito siya. Okay, ito sila, nasa loob ng casing. Arduino, nasa loob. Ito, nasa, uh, sa labas part ng casing. Siyempre, ito sila, sa labas ito siya. Kaya, medyo hinabaan ko yung wire. At saka itong mga float switch. Siyempre, sila, Nasa labas sila ng casing kasi they will be installed accordingly. So, usually yung wind sensor and rain, nasa taas yan siya ng sakaling saan yung kalugar or open field. Ito naman sa riverside. Okay. And then, itong mga ito. Let's say, itong bio, uh, uh, atmospheric pressure 
parang barometer ba? Atmospheric pressure sensor. Uh, ilalagay lang siya sa labas ng casing. Okay? Uh, any design will do. Okay? Uh, actually, very simple lang naman. Kung gusto mong ilagay sa loob yung wire, nakalabas lang yung sensor, tanggalin lang muna. Okay? Just memorize yung color, tsaka yung points dito, tapos tanggalin muna, ilabas yung wire, tapos ilagay ulit. So, kailangan nakalabas to siya kasi it's measuring yung atmospheric sensor ng nasa labas. Same thing with ito, kailangan nasa labas siya because this is sensor and most specially ito, light sensor. Kasi kapag nilagay mo to sa loob ng casing, ang makukuha mong data ng light intensity is yung gaano kaliwanag sa ilalim ng casing, which is basically madilim parati. So, ilalagay ito siya sa labas. Okay. And naka-face up, by the way, naka-face up, pag ganyan. Ito, naka-face up. Ito rin, naka-face up. Okay. So, I guess that's all. Um, that's the first part. Second part will be testing. Uh, it's a video kung explaining us, uh, explaining to you kung paano uh, we are, paano mag-working system. Okay. Um, again, kung sa reality, ang, ang main purpose natin sana is kung portable siya, pwedeng gamitin kahit saan, kahit walang kuryente. Basically, kailangan natin gawin, gawin to siyang solar powered. But for now, for the prototype, uh, ready na siya gawing solar power. Cut lang ito. Since ang kailangan nito is 12 volts, tapos yung dalawang wire, ilagay sa solar uh, charge controller. So, I guess that's all. Uh, thank you for watching the video.